Welcome to video two of week two of the SAS Bootcamp. In this video, we are going to learn about conditional logic within SAS, and we are going to focus on if then else statements. Before we begin, I want to show you guys one of the data sets that we are going to be using for this next part of the week two's content. The data set we are using is in the class library. It's called Pokemon. And this one is for all of you Pokemon fans out there, millennials like me that grew up loving the Pokemon series. Uh, this data set has 166 rows. It actually has only Gen 1, the best gen, of course, uh, of all the Pokemon. So if you scroll through it, you'll see that it has 166 rows. So all of the names of Pokemon are included here. It has hit points for each Pokemon, attack score, defense score, special attack, special defense, speed of the Pokemon, and whether the Pokemon is legendary or not legendary. So we only have a, a, a few legendary Pokemon. In fact, I don't think we have any legendary Pokemon within the Gen 1 data set here. So there are 166 rows, and this is what the data set looks like. So let me talk about conditional logic, and we'll do some examples with using that Pokemon data set to see how this would work. Conditional logic within SAS is really, really simple. Uh, in fact, the syntax for conditional logic is almost like plain English. Conditional logic using an if-then statement can be in two types. You can either have an if-then statement or an if-then-else statement. The structure of the if-then statement is displayed right here in my comment. And it's, you can see it's a comment because it's green in color. The, the structure of that statement is simply if followed by the condition that we are looking at, and then the word then, and then whatever you want to say, that's your statement, right? The statement portion can just be setting a variable to a value or changing something about a different variable or creating a new variable, whatever it is, that statement comes after the then word. Now, if you want to do an if then else statement, then you would just say if condition, then statement one. And then in the next statement, you would say else statement two. Let's look at some examples. So this becomes a little more clear. I'm going to write a data statement. By now, you should be familiar with what data steps look like. I'm going to say data strong underscore Pokemon. That's going to be the name of my new data set. And I'm going to set the data set class dot Pokemon. So I'm telling SAS here, use the data set Pokemon that's in the class library and create a new live data set for me that is called strong underscore Pokemon. First thing I want to do is finish up my data set with a run statement. And then I want to start entering information in the middle. So let's write a simple basic if then statement. So I want to say if, um, let me look up my variable name so I know exactly that I'm typing the right thing. If hit points is a variable name. So if hit points is greater than 50, then I'm going to create a new variable. Let's say for the sake of argument, I'm creating a variable called strong points and that is equals defense divided by two. Right. So what this is saying is that if condition and the condition I'm using here is that the hit points variable has a value greater than 50. And when that condition is met, SAS will execute this next step, which is the statement which says a new variable called strong points is created, which is basically just the defense points divided by two. So if you look at our data set here, whenever hit points is over 50, like in this row right here, it will take the defense column and it will divide it by two and it will save that value in a new variable called strong points, right? That should be simple enough. Now, when you are writing this condition, you don't have to write it with that particular symbol. This symbol, which is the symbol greater than symbol can also be written a few different ways. So alternative ways of writing that symbol see if I can alternative ways of expressing a condition. So I could have said if hit points GT 50, which means greater than 50, then I can write that. That would be the same exact thing. I could also have written if hit points equals 50. And if I write that, it will only execute this when hit point is exactly equal to 50. I can also write if hit points is less greater than or equal to 50, which is GE greater than or equals. I can also write it as if hit points is greater than or equal. So I can use the symbol greater than followed by the symbol equals followed by 50. And in this case, the command will be executed whenever the hit points variable is at least equal to 50 
or greater than 50. So there are different ways to write those conditions and any of those things will work just the same. For now, I'm going to actually delete this. Let's run the code with this simple one statement between set and run and see what the code does. I'm going to select it, hit execute. First thing I do, check my log. You'll see here that I have only blue note statements, no errors or warnings. You can look at the output data here, but you can also go look at it within your work library here. So for now, let's just look at what SAS Studio provides for you. I'm gonna minimize my columns here, okay? So you'll see here at the very end, there is a variable called strong points, right? This strong points, the new variable we just created. This variable is equal to defense divided by two. So you'll see here 63 divided by two is 31.5. 83 divided by two is 41.5. 123 divided by two is 61.5. But this is actually, there is actually some rows of data where there are no numbers. Instead, there is a little period. So you'll see here that this strong points variable was only created when a certain condition was met. What was that condition? The condition was that hit points had to be equal to greater than 50. So the first row, for example, hit points was less than 50. So in that row, strong points is missing and a missing numeric variable within SAS is depicted using a single period or a full stop, right? That's how SAS depicts a missing numeric value. Missing character values are depicted by space or nothing at all. But for numeric values, there is a little period there. And this period shows that our conditional logic worked perfectly because it only created the strong points variables when the height points was greater than 50. Now, if I had, if I had gone back and used any of these, any of the alternative ways, so instead of my greater than symbol, if I had written GT, it would have created the same thing. If I had GE, which is greater than or equal to, it would have created a different one where it would have also executed the strong points statement for any way, any row where the hit points was exactly equal to 50. Let me try one more condition here and you can see how this works. So if hit points is LT 50, LT meaning less than, I'm going to hit run, check my log, log looks good. Come to my output data preview here. You'll see that strong points was executed in the first row where hit points is less than 50, but strong points is missing for the next three rows where hit points is actually greater than 50, right? I hope that makes sense. All right. So having seen how this works, let's jump quickly into the next step and add an else statement. So this is the if then without an else, but you can add an else statement. If I wanted to add one, I would just type else. Remember that the else has to be typed after the if then statement and it actually comes after the semicolon itself. So it's not the same statement, it's a different statement. So then you'll say else strong points equals defense multiplied by two. So what this is saying is that when this condition hit points less than 50 is met, then strong points is half of defense. But if that condition is not met, then strong points is double what defense is. So let me run this. And then we can Check our log, make sure there are no errors or warnings. Looks good. I'm going to go to our output data set. And there you see. So strong points is half of defense. Strong points is equal to half of defense for row one, where hit points was less than 50, and strong points is twice of defense, double the defense value, 63 to 126, when hit points is greater than 60. So you see what is happening here is that when the condition is being met, this part, this statement is being executed. When condition is not being met, this statement is being executed. Now, all of this works well, as long as your condition is dealing with a numeric variable. If your condition was dealing with a character variable, you would have to do this slightly differently. So let's talk about how you do that. Let's take an example. I want to say if name of the Pokemon equals Bulbasaur, then type of the Pokemon equals grass, right? So what this is saying is this is the exact same structure of my previous if then statement, except that I'm saying insert my condition statement here deals with a character variable. So whenever you are dealing with a character variable, remember you have to use quotes. 
either single quotes or double quotes, but you have to use quotes. So I'm typing Balbasar with thin quotes here, and then I'm typing type equals grass. Now, because my follow-up variable in the statement is also a character variable, I'm using quotes there as well, so that the word grass is now nested within quotes. The one thing to remember, this is very, very important, is that when you use quotes, whether you write your characters in uppercase or lowercase becomes very, very important. So before I run this, I'm going to open my data set, make sure that Bulbasaur is spelled correctly. I don't have a spelling mistake or a typo and that I actually use the capital B or the uppercase B exactly like how it is present in the data set. I'm checking. That's what it looks like. I'm going to close the data set, come back. And I know now that this will work. So when this condition is met, then type will be equal to grass. When the condition is not met, the type variable should be missing. Let's run that. See if it looks okay. Log looks fine. No errors or warnings. I go to my output. You'll see here type equals grass just for the first row where the, where the Pokemon's name was Bulbasaur. For all other rows, it did not matter. Now, this is a good way to use if then statements within SAS for even a character variable. But one problem that you will find is often you may not know if the name of the Pokemon had a capital B or maybe the whole name was in capitals or so on and so forth. This becomes especially true when you're dealing with big data sets where the name Bulbasaur might have come up in the data set 3000 times or 30,000 times. And there is no possible way for you to look at every single uh, occurrence of Bulbasaur to see if they were all pronounced the same way, if they were all spelled the same way. In order to account for that, there are certain things you can do. One basic thing you can do is you can use something called the lowcase operator. The lowcase operator can be incorporated within the condition statement of an if then statement. And what it does is it basically takes your name variable and it converts all of the characters within that variable to lowercase lowercase as in smaller letters. So instead of my capital B, I would type small b here. So, because now what I'm doing in this comparison is I'm comparing the lowercase converted values within that name variable to whatever is typed within my quotes. So within my quotes, I'm typing Bulbasaur within lower quotes, within lowercase. So now I will find an e equal value. Now, if I do this and hit run, Let me check log, Logs, log looks okay. Output data set also work. We still have type equals grass for this data set. Now, you might wonder how does this work? The name Bulbasaur actually has a capital B and in my condition, I actually have a lower case B. Well, it worked because I used the low case operator, which first converted all of the values within that name variable to a lower case before it checked for this condition, right? Now, if I did not want to use lowercase, I could have used upcase. The upcase operator converts all the letters in an argument to uppercase as SAS Studio conveniently shows you here. If I use upcase, I can't type Bulbasaur in lowercase. I have to type Bulbasaur like this. Let's, let's do the opposite and see what happens. I want to type Bulbasaur like this and we can see if the code works or not. I hit execute, I see log. Log still worked because as far as SAS is concerned, your syntax was perfect. But when you open the data set, you will see that the type variable is missing for every single row. It did not recognize Bulbasaur as matching that criteria. And it did not recognize it because I used the upcase operator and I used lowercase letters here. If I instead type Bulbasaur like this, you will see that this code will work. Let me double check my log. Log looks good. There you go. There you have it. Now, this is how you operate if then statements. Uh, within character variables also, you can do else statements. So you can type else equals other. Um, and this should work exactly like the previous if then else statement we saw with the numeric variable. So I'm not going to show this. The one thing I do want to show very quickly though, is how to use Boolean logic within condition statements, within if then else statements. SAS respects all Boolean logic operators. Boolean operators include things such as and, or, and not, and all of these things can be included to, M to chain multiple conditions together. So let's look at an example. 
let's say if hit points is greater than or equal to 50 and defense is greater than or equal to 50 then my favorite equals one so what this is saying is that if the hit points for a certain pokemon is greater than or equal to 50 and the defense is really high which means defense is also greater than 50 then i'm creating a new variable called my favorite and i'm setting that to equal one so whenever there is a one that pokemon is my favorite else my favorite equals zero so whenever there is no one then it's not a it's not my favorite pokemon i'm going to hit run on this one i'm going to check my log make sure it worked go to my output data set and there's that variable right so now this variable is created based on two different variables what was the value of the hit points variable and what was the value of the defense variable? So let's look at an example here. Um, so this, I'm scrolling down to a random row here. This row has my favorite equals one, and you'll see that the hit points was greater than 50 and defense was greater than or equal to 50. Similarly, this row has my favorite equals zero. You'll see that hit points was greater than 50, but defense was not greater than 50. So in order for this condition to be met, both of those conditions had to be met, which means hit points had to be greater than 50 and defense had to be greater than 50. Now, there are certain ways that you can make the conditions even more complex. So let's say, for example, I, I, I'm going to use parentheses to make this a little more clear. I'm going to say, if hit points greater than or equal to 50 and defense greater than or equal to 50, or speed is greater than or equal to 75 and attack is greater than or equal to 50 then my favorite equals one what this will do is this this whole part here is my condition within the if then statement and what this is saying is that either this has to be met this part within the first part of the parentheses or this second part within the parentheses has to be met if either of those things is met then my favorite equals one. Now, what does each of these involve? So in order for this to be met, speed has to be greater than 75 and attack has to be greater than 50. If that is not met, but this part is met, which is hit points is greater than or equal to 50 and defense is greater than or equal to 50, then also my favorite will be equal to one. If none of those conditions are met, my favorite will be equal to zero. So let's look at an example of these we'll run. Make sure the code worked. No errors. Uh, let's look at this. I'm, I'm going to use this uh, columns portion on the left here to try and um, use only the variables we need. We don't need the special attack variable, the special defense variable. We don't need the legendary variable. We don't need to see this variable. We don't need to see type variable. Okay. So what this does is it basically just um, shows fewer number of variables so I don't have to scroll to the right every single time. Right? Um, okay, there we go. So you'll see here my favorite equals one in this column where hit points was greater than 50 and defense was greater than 50. In this first row, however, hit points was not greater than 50, defense was not greater than 50, but attack was also less than 50, speed was also less than 50. So none of these conditions were met in the first row of the data because none of the conditions were met. In that row, my favorite became set to zero. And in the second row, because one of these two conditions were met, my favorite equals one. If you've used Boolean logic anywhere else uh, in any other programming, whether that be Excel, whether that be Stata, whether that be R, uh, that Boolean logic works exactly the same no matter where you go. And that is true for SAS as well. Uh, that wraps up if then statements for, for this video. I'm going to come back and pick up conditional logic again for part two where we look at some more examples and then we look at uh, select when operators as well.